I'm a refugee. I came here from Melbourne. <laughs> I'm owning it. My daughter, I will have her say, I came to South Australia as a refugee <laughs> at only 15 months of age, fleeing from the despotic, mask-wearing, fascist state of Victoria. I don't know. <laughs> We got in just before the border closed. I, I packed my family together into a ramshackle vessel. 2009 Volvo XC90. <laughs> and it was, a, it was a difficult passage from Melbourne to Adelaide as well. You know, it wasn't quite choppy seas, but, you know, the bleak chasm that is Keith... It's not easy to get through those country towns without committing suicide, let me tell you. <laughs> and there, oh, look, there are some differences between myself and the other refugees who complain a lot, I must say. <laughs> I mean, like, the only reason I would sew up my lips is because I just can't stop eating this beautiful South Australian produce, <laughs> all right? Gobble, gobble, gobble. Can't stop. <laughs> And I think the only reason that I would throw my daughter overboard would be if I took her for swimming lessons down at the Burnside Pool. <laughs> yeah, other similarities. They, they came here on rickety things made of wood and I came here in a car with a beautiful leather interior and a glorious mahogany dash. <laughs> Some people don't think it's real, the disease. I think it is real. I've been tested for it four times. People say it's painful, not me. You know, I, I don't mind it, actually. I'm a, I'm a COVID-19 size queen. I've discovered it. Get deep up in the nose. I, I don't mind it at all. But uh, some people, they say it's not real. And I agree with the conspiracy theorists. First two steps, they're, they're on the money. You know, they go... Uh, my government doesn't care about me. And I think, absolutely, that you're bang on. And they go, and there's an elite cabal of global paedophiles controlling the world. And I'll go, hey, maybe. I'll go with you, <laughs> even there. And they go, and they're controlling us with masks. No. It's atheism and porn, you fucking idiot. The mass, the mass are controlling me. It's such a stupid thing to say. I wish that there was a global cabal of paedophiles telling you what to do. Someone, I could take or leave the paedophilia, but someone <laughs> needs to tell these people what to do. Someone has to be in charge. It's very sad when no one's in charge. You know, like, people say, oh, the Jews are in charge of Hollywood. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> They make great movies we can all enjoy. Can you imagine if the French were in charge of Hollywood? What a disaster that would be. Iron Man is flying on his way to fight the big space enemy and he just stops halfway and has a cigarette by the beach. And, oh, what if struggle is meaningless? No. You couldn't do it. You couldn't, you couldn't have, like, you know, what if Australian cinema was in charge of Hollywood? And then the next Godzilla movie, halfway through, it seems like it's going to be about fighting Godzilla, but then all of a sudden it's about heroin-addicted single mothers. <laughs> and, uh, reconciliation. <laughs> Fuck your mask, huh? Never have the $6 bread and coals because you can't go back. That's the issue. It's too good. I started out as a sweet, humble little child, you know, eating the Wonder White. The tip top. I thought that was fine. Now, I wouldn't even feed it to a duck. <laughs> when you move out of home, you get a little more adventurous. You try the Helgas. That's a $3.50 loaf. <laughs> Never should have done that. That's like smoking a marijuana cigarette behind the bike shed at school. That is a gateway bread. <laughs> and now I'm just chowing down on that sweet $6 loaf. It's uncut. That's pure stuff. I'm lying in a gutter covered in flour and sesame seeds with a Vienna sourdough loaf hanging from my veins. It's too good, baby. And it doesn't stop there, you know? It doesn't stop with the... Because you can't put a poor man's butter on a rich man's bread. You better believe I'm buying that lure pack. 
A1. Used to be $7 for the Lurt Pack butter. Now at Coles it says down down $6. Now they moved it down down in 2006. So Coles, what have you done for me lately? Get that down. As far as I'm concerned, that's not down down, that's the price. But, uh, Okay, can't stop there. Every spread and conserves. I'm back in Adelaide getting that old beautiful Beerenberg. Every member of the family. I'm putting that on my toast. <laughs> We're spending $15 for toast at this point. I've had to start eating out just to save money. <laughs> everything. Everything at the supermarket. I'm eating bananas with the wax tips, baby! <laughs> I'm a dangerous man with some money in my pocket. Keep up! <laughs> I'm buying tomatoes that are connected to other fucking tomatoes. I'm not an idiot. I unscrew them and lie at self-checkout. Because I'm untrustworthy. Here's a saying you might have heard before. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Fool me three times. It's twice as much shame on me. I cannot believe I allowed you to fool me again. She definitely learned from the first time not to be fooled. Fool me four times? Shame back on you, actually. You are picking on a vulnerable man. <laughs> Something has obviously gone wrong with me. This is, like, this is like bullying the kid in a wheelchair at primary school. It's like, bully the fat kid, bully the kid with the limp. Four times you're going to fool me? Unbelievable. Fool me five times, shame on me again. I mean, there's, I'm vulnerable, but at some point you have to take some personal responsibility for crying out loud. I've got 12 of these, they're good for eight. Fool me six times. Fool me six times, six times a fool. And I have lured you into my trap. Pretending to be a fool six consecutive times to give you a false sense of security, only to flip it. And now you are the fool, and you have the shame. For me seven times you saw through my trick. But there's no shame, because I'm getting fooled by the best. <laughs> Fool me eight times, and this is no longer a fooling, this is a systematic cruelty. And rather than allocating shame or even looking at you as an individual, I'd like you to unpack the nature of your fooling, remove the fool privilege that you're bringing to the situation and build a freer world for us all. But fool me nine times? Well, that's one time too many. And I will rise up with all the other members of the fooletariat to install a dictatorship of the fools and wipe out the people who have been fooling us. But fool me ten times, the uh, revolution goes awry. It's in a sort of Stalin taking over the USSR type of situation. I told you it was only good till eight. <laughs> oh, I, appreciate it. I, appreciate it. I would never call a woman crazy. To her face, they hate it. And it makes them go insane. <laughs> and that word crazy, it can mean too many things when a man... A cra when a man goes, oh, man go, oh, my girlfriend's crazy. That could either mean, oh, she like ripped the head off a rabbit and, and <laughs> threw it at my door and threatened to kill me and burnt all of my things. Or it could mean, man, she got a little too upset when she found out I was fucking a prostitute. <laughs> Could mean anything. Could mean anything to a man. Men, we have a term for us as well that's too too broad. Creepy. Creepy. Creepy could be a man who has trouble looking next to you know, he, he can't look you in the eye and then he's a bit too close on a bus. Or it can be a man who rapes his whole family in a prison. <laughs> in a little dungeon prison under his house. It's too broad a term, ladies! He's a creepy guy. Does he not wash or does he kill? <laughs> That's the sort of crazy use of language we've been complaining about. <laughs>